By background, I'm a scientist, I'm a virologist. I became a patent attorney, and I also worked with the Innocence Project looking at um, ways of identifying things that might clear wrongly convicted individuals using DNA technology. Many are not aware of back that Dr. Stein's first engagement with our community is when he was a parent. And for several years, Dr. Stein and I were talking about the future of where the science program can be in the Rikos Shiva High School. At one point, I looked at Dr. Stein and said, maybe you should consider coming on and being our chair of the science department. Surprise, he accepted the offer. We started small with just really it was going to be one course at the beginning. And this was related to a science program that was just beginning in the United States. And we really took that as an opportunity to turn science education on its head. I went to Kushner my entire life from pre-K to 12th grade. And then we had this new interesting class at Kushner my senior year of, of high school called biomedical engineering. And I was like, that sounds really interesting. I don't know anything about it, but I might as well try. I knew I was a math science kind of person, um, but I never really thought about engineering so seriously until I came to high school and actually had Dr. Stein as a teacher. In my opinion, it's something that they have from the time they're little kids. What do little kids really want to do? How's this work? Take it apart, they break it, and what do we do? We teach them, don't do that, don't touch that, don't break that. And what we do in, in our program is really touch that, see how it works. Even if you break it, you begin to have an understanding, and then you get an idea how to make it better. The, STEM program at RKYHS is really an opportunity to put science into the hands of the students. When real science is about a creative process of trying to figure things out, and our STEM program from start to finish is about teaching kids how to figure out how to figure it out. Actually, the way Dr. Stein likes to teach is if you ask him a question, the way he answers the question is by answering your question with another question. Dr. Stein always promoted um, critical thinking and innovation. Dr. Stein has modeled for all of us that students can all understand the beauty and the strength and the potency of the world of science at their fingertips. He took the concept of scientific thinking and he expanded it to scientific action, teaching children that they can become active engagers. It also gave me the confidence to do it and to say, yeah, I'm a high school student, but I can do it no matter how old I am. Dr. Stein was really the one who encouraged the critical thinking. He encouraged the coding. Uh, he encouraged the bringing a product to market type of ment mentality. Dr. Stein believes and instructs his students to learn science by doing science. It gives them the confidence that they can approach a real problem. We want students to identify real world problems, um, come up with solutions for them, but not just solutions in theory, but solutions that they actually implement. They come up with an idea for a solution to a problem, but they actually build it. And our children have created these most remarkable, innovative designs. They've had the opportunity to participate in numerous uh, events both on a small level, a local level, regional level, and national level, and have fared really well. But what I'm most proud of them over is we have depth and, and an excitement, and these kids are really compelled to move forward. It's self-initiated work. Students are involved in the most intricate and sophisticated science research. We have scientific engineering, genetic engineering, we have biological engineering. Students who go through the science program of this school believe they can do things. We've been able to acquire certain instrumentation that really at a high school level is extraordinary and even at a college level is not common. We have a fully equipped molecular genetics laboratory uh, where we're doing cloning work, sequ DNA sequencing, uh, DNA isolation, um, we have a scanning electron microscope where students can look at really at molecular size targets. This sort of ability to do high level frontline research really opens doors and gives them possibilities that are 
far beyond what they even could imagine when they came into classes. Our minus 80 degree ultra low temperature freezer, which allows us to store all sorts of cell lines and could even store the, the Pfizer vaccine. We have one in place as part of our facility. We have ultra high purification liquid chromatography uh, device, which was uh, donated to us from Novartis. Um, so we've been very fortunate to be able to acquire some of these devices. We also have a tissue culture laboratory, which is what we call a, a biosafety level two plus facility, where we can do all kinds of growth of human tissue, human cells, cell culture, and that enabled us to actually pivot at the beginning of the COVID pandemic to develop a virus testing lab to look for people who were uh, potentially COVID positive. Dr. Stein understood the trajectory of the virus before we even began to understand its impact. First reports were coming out about this new virus that seemed to be uh, on the scene in Wuhan. We began tracking what was going on in the genetic engineering course. Um, and when the first sequence of that virus, which had a different name at that time, came out, I think about the second or third week in January, the same day it was published, we had that sequence out in front of us. The students were able to identify a likely target for the vaccine within a few days of that sequence being uh, made available. Um, and in fact, that is the target that was used uh, in both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. Over the summer, we came up with this approach using saliva to create a way of screening the entire building. And to the credit of the administration and the board, they were incredibly supportive of this approach. And we were ready to go at the very beginning of school. So from day one, we were able to screen the entire building, the staff, the faculty, the students, all the way down to the babies in the baby room. I personally am the one performing a lot of the testing, doing the pooling of all the saliva samples, uh, collection, data analysis. We right now are on par with papers coming out from Yale labs. Dr. Stein gave us the confidence that we were taking every step possible to minimize risk when we brought our 1,200 people into the building during a time in the world where most people thought that schools could never be reopened. We are very grateful to Dr. Stein. And the nursing staff at, at JKHA has been extraordinary in tracking what's going on, monitoring those students, keeping in touch with the families, calculating return dates, making sure together with the administration and the administrative assistants, making sure that the people coming into the building are supposed to be in the building. So it's really been a comprehensive uh, approach that's kept our doors open really from day one um, at a high level. So I want to give a sincere thank you to Dr. Stein uh, for including me in on this project, for allowing me to work alongside him. We've been contacted by many institutions, universities, high schools, groups of high schools, outside companies, all of whom were looking to see if they could replicate what we're doing. Actually, they were looking to see if we could do their samples for them. Baba Cherebi, speaking about leaders, said that good leaders create followers. Excellent leaders create leaders. Dr. Stein has created leaders in the school in the world of science because they all are themselves become scientific leaders. Dr. Stein is definitely somebody I look up to. Um, the way that he treats all individuals who come to interact with him, his ambition, the fact that he's able to accomplish so much. Dr. Stein is a partner and provides meaningful counsel that allows all of us as school leaders to move forward and power through our challenges to know that we are doing everything that we possibly can to keep our students and our faculty and our community safe. I'm in touch with and I'm contacted by students long after they graduate. They keep coming back. They have questions, not just for a recommendation for a job, but things that they're excited about. They come back and lecture to current students. 
Um, once we get him, we never let him go. For his appreciation and respect for every student, for his love and our devotion to our community, and for his wise and ongoing counsel. Thank you, Dr. Stein, for your indefatigable leadership, for your friendship, and for showing us the way forward in a very difficult and uncertain time. We are always going to be grateful to you. Dr. Stein, we are deeply indebted to you for your visionary instruction for bringing science and learning to a whole new dimension, for teaching students that they can love science by doing science, for inspiring our students and mentoring them so they can keep on raising the ceiling on their learning so they can become the scientists of tomorrow. We are very grateful to you for all that you've done to enable us to open school with the mitigation and protocols in place to keep us as safe as possible. You have given us the confidence, the fortitude, and the strength to move forward and power through this pandemic to offer an exemplary education for our students in our school. We are very grateful to you. We are proud to present to you this evening a beautiful one-of-a-kind paper cut designed by Israeli artist Mikol Mayer of Mikol Designs. The inscription on the paper cut reads as follows. Hadoeg liyom zorech itim. Hadoeg l'shanim note itzim. Hadoeg l'dorot mechanech anashim. One who is concerned with days plants wheat. One who is concerned with years plants trees. One who is concerned with generations educates children. Dr. Stein, chazak ve'amatz. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Rubin. And I also want to thank you for bringing me to the Ray Kushner Yeshiva High School and for all the support that you've given me to build this program, to expand the program, and for the vision you had in allowing the creation of a program that was beyond the normal. And I appreciate that. And this opportunity has been uh, a tremendous strength for me as well. Thank, thank you. you.